China seems to be on its approach to achieving success in space exploration, having mastered all of the disciplines that are essential. China is hell-bent on dethroning the United States as the world's main space power. Despite its benign goals, Beijing's ideology regards space as a military domain, and it's significantly investing in space infrastructure to guarantee both economic and military benefits. The United States must commit adequate resources in creating its new space force to protect America's national interests and security in space if it is to continue to compete from a position of strength. It's apparent that Beijing's capabilities are steadily improving. China successfully launched the Long March 5B rocket on May 5th, which is intended to send humans into space. After failed efforts to launch the Long March 3B in April and the Long March 7A in March, this was the first successful launch of any Long March rocket that year. In today's episode, let's have a look at how China will dominate over space. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Let's dive in. Tiangong Station is the most advanced space station currently in orbit. There are a number of private companies that have developed innovative designs for space stations. China is the only group that has a fully operational crew module already in orbit and a clear plan to expand their existing core into a fully operational space station. This comes at the same time that the rapidly aging International Space Station is entering its final phase of operations. As far as life in space is concerned, we're now engaged in a space race. Let's begin with a quick review of the past. We were startled to hear that China began researching aeronautical technology in the late 1950s alongside the United States and the Soviet Union and that the program had a far longer history than you might expect to see. In the early 1960s, the Chinese achieved some modest success by essentially reverse engineering Soviet rockets and building their own copies by mice into orbit. When the conquest of the moon became a hot topic in the 1960s, Chairman Mao decided that China should do as well by 1969. The Chinese had developed a heavy-lift satellite launch vehicle that they had derived from an intercontinental ballistic missile. Obviously, at the same time, the Chinese Republic was entering the height of the Cultural Revolution, a pretty infamous period of unrest in which Chairman Mao fought to purge all remnants of capitalism and traditional society from Chinese society. It was an unfortunate period for a variety of reasons, but it was an especially unfortunate period for the Chinese space program, which came to a grinding halt in the 1970s and pretty much died along with Chairman Mao in 1976. But there was a resurrection, much like any dead character. Because of this, they became just the third country in history to successfully launch a human into space on their own, whereas every other country was content to rely on NASA's space shuttle for transportation. After much deliberation, China decided to build their own space station using the Long March 2 rocket and the Shenzhou 5 spacecraft. In 2021, China successfully launched the core module of the Tiangong space station into orbit using a Long March Heavenly Palace rocket. This is a significant achievement because China is not permitted to use the International Space Station. In 2011, the United States government formally prohibited Chinese astronauts from visiting the International Space Station, citing technological concerns. Security is also a concern, which is regrettably funny in hindsight given that Russia is once again the bad guys and they control half of the darn station. In all honesty, the United States was arguably the most influential in igniting the Chinese space program by isolating them from the world coalition and compelling them to pursue their own aspirations against the international coalition. The Tiangong Space Research Station is intended to be a multi-module future generation space research station. From the outside, the Tiangong Space Station looks a lot like the old Russian Mir space station, which was deorbited after serving its purpose as a test run. China has experimented with two prototype modules, the first of which was launched in 2011 and was a very small 10-ton space station about the same size as the SpaceX Crew Dragon or Starliner. Both of these prototypes were deorbited after serving their purpose as test runs. China launched the real thing into low Earth orbit. The difference between the ISS and the Tiangong interiors is night and day. The ISS is a cramped rat's nest of 20 years worth of tech all cobbled together with exposed cables everywhere, but China's new module is sleek, clean, and modern in addition to the core module. China has two more science modules on the way, with the second set to launch in May 2022 and the third set to launch by the end of this year to complete the first phase of Tiangong. 
The first phase will still be small, about a quarter the size of the 16-module International Space Station, but Tiangong will make much more efficient use of its interior space and power system. In addition, Tiangong is powered by gallium photovoltaic cells, which is a new discovery in solar energy and is both extremely efficient and robust to heat the solar system of the Chinese station should show to be a huge advance. This will allow the station to employ electric ion thrusters to maintain its position in orbit. Currently, the station consumes around 9 tons of rocket fuel every year to maintain its own position, at a cost of billions of dollars per year. There is also a plan for Tiangong to have its own space telescope by 2024. This would be a separate module that orbits in parallel to the station with the ability to dock to Tiangong periodically for adjustments and refueling. China is already marketing the Tiangong as a commercial space playground, aiming for paying clients to visit the station, which may include international research programs or space tourism. China promises that anybody will be able to visit Tiangong within the next decade if they can afford it. So, as an American company, will SpaceX Dragon capsules be supposed to be able to dock with Tiangong? Probably not. And it also appears that China is eyeing up the creation of a commercial spaceflight option. They are currently expanding the capacity of the Shenzhou crew capsule from three to six passengers, and the Chinese Academy of Sciences is aiming to offer rides to space tourists as soon as possible, so we know that NASA has no intention of trying to do so. With a large spherical inflated living module on top, which reminds us of Spaceballs nano racks for some reason. This is a company that has already done a lot of work on the International Space Station, and they are well known and trusted in the aerospace industry. Their Starlab concept is a super compact four-person station that can be deployed in a single rocket launch with an inflatable crew section, its own robot arm, and a state-of-the-art research laboratory orbital reef. The backbone of the station is three solid modules in a line that are a massive six meters in diameter. They're obviously counting on the ultra-wide fairing size of the new Glenn rocket to get these things into orbit, so hopefully that idea works out. The station is covered in docking ports and connection hardware. It looks extremely modular and expandable. The thermal radiators are joined by a truss framework. We see several inflatable modules, which would be built by Sierra Space, as well as the Dream Chaser space plane from the Sierra docked to the station, indicating that they're clearly eyeing that vehicle as a crew and cargo transport. The Starliner by Boeing also makes a brief appearance in the promo video, indicating that if that ever works, it will have a place at Orbital Reef, and the question of whether or not SpaceX will be allowed to visit the next one is Axiom. Anyway, after the Axiom modules are up and running and the ISS is scaling down, the Axiom cluster would detach from the main station and become its own thing, retaining the ability to expand further. That's the vision for the future of life in space. China obviously has a leg up here because they're the only one contender with an operational space station and very clear and imminent plans to expand it into something fully operational and open for business within a few years. All of these private companies have some really cool ideas, and it would be amazing if they all succeeded. There's plenty of room for everyone, but it'll be fascinating to watch these develop and see who actually succeeds. Anyway, here's where we end the video. If you like our content, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.